Rana Khan, and Indranil Banerjee, journalist and woodworker based in Greater Noida, India. I get asked a lot from beginners what tools they should buy to start woodworking. Now that may seem to be an easy question, but actually it's not, because there's so many kinds of woodworking. You may be wanting to make kitchen cabinets for the home, you may be wanting to make fine furniture, you might want to get into carving, or you want to get into stuff like marquetry and parquetry. So these are all different disciplines, and for each different kind of woodworking, you need a different set of tools. So it is not so easy to recommend one basic set of tools for beginning woodworking. In this video, I'll assume that you want to do stuff with plywood, you know, stuff that you want to make for the house, the utility things uh, like kitchen cabinets, maybe adding drawers or making picture frames, that sort of thing for your home. So for DIY woodworkers, uh, the best choice uh, is to start off with man-made material such as plywood and particle board and MDF. So for this kind of uh, stuff, you need a basic toolkit which I will tell you about in this video. I'll introduce you to some of the basic tools required by showing you how they are used. We're going to make a simple shelf in this video and uh, I'll show you what tools are required to make that simple shelf so you will get a better idea of why you need those tools and what those tools can do. Now with me I have these pieces of board. This is this old piece of salvage from somewhere and this piece of plywood which has been lying around. We'll use these two pieces to make a simple shelf. And before you make any shelf or do any project for that matter, it's a good idea to do a little sketch. The simplest of sketches is more than enough, but it gives you an idea of what is involved and what you're going to need. And then you can figure out the dimensions, the depth, the width, and so on. So here we've got this little drawing, and now we're going to first mark and then uh, cut our pieces to the required uh, sizes. For any project, the first set of tools that you need are measuring and marking tools. You've got to figure out and know exactly to what dimensions you have to cut your wood or your board or whatever material you're going to be using. So these measuring tools include stuff like uh, measuring tape. Uh, you have this foldable ruler. This is not essential, but it's a very useful uh, tool to have. You know, you can get into the insides, you can do all kinds of things with it. Then you need a regular ruler. It can be big, it can be small, but uh, I think you need uh, several of these of different sizes for different uh, situations. And the other tool which is very important uh, for the woodworker is a square. There's lots of uses for this tool and you've got to make sure that you have a good and accurate square. And then we have what is the marking tools. Once you've, uh, you've figured out that this is the dimension of the wood that you want to use, you have to mark it before you can cut it and join it together. So two main marking tools, one is the humble pencil and the other is the marking knife. The marking knife is much more accurate and you want to make really accurate cuts and joints, you need a good marking knife. This is a typical marking knife, somewhat different from the regular knife. But as you can see, the blade is shaped very differently and it's a great tool for accurate marking. So let's see what tools we need to make the shelf. first thing we have to do is to measure and mark the planks. Once we have measured and marked the planks, we need to cut it. For this, we need saws. The next category of tools could be called cutting tools. You need to size your pieces to the precise dimensions and for that you need two kinds of cutting tools. One is of course saws, hand saws, and the other are chisels. Saws come in various shapes and sizes, but don't let that intimidate you. Just get one which fits your budget 
and which cuts straight. That's key. A saw needs to cut straight and accurately. I find these regular long blade saws pretty good and they are good enough for most jobs. Then you have a slightly more specialized saw which is used a lot more in joinery which are known as back saws because they have this piece of steel for stiffening the blade. And then you have these uh, Japanese style saws. They are also excellent but more difficult to come by in India and uh, far more expensive than these saws. Then there are chisels. Now chisels are like this, they, they, they are used for making various joinery cuts and uh, other stuff like housings, dados, grooves and so on. So for doing all that kind of stuff you need these chisels and again they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Uh, this one is a, a local one, I got a set of these for about 400 and uh, that was some time ago though. But they are fairly cheap and they are excellent. A lot of uh, well-known companies make chisels as well. This one is a two-inch chisel made by the company called Anand and they make very nice uh, tools as well. Clamps are another very important category of tools which are often overlooked. I think they are absolutely critical for safe and good woodworking. Nowadays you get clamps of various kinds and so easily. When I started off woodworking 10 years ago, believe me it was difficult to get different kinds of clamps, especially these F-style clamps which have become so common these days. You can get them anywhere, you can order them on Amazon and uh, other online stores and they are pretty cheap as well, mostly again made in China. <laughs> category of tools are hand planes. I put hand planes on a category by themselves because they are so many kinds and they're dedicated to doing so many different kinds of things. But for a beginner I think one hand plane uh, would be sufficient and uh, the plane to t buy to take uh, as your first plane would be a number five. Now the number five is a longish plane it does a lot of things and it's called the jack plane, jack of all trades. Then you have other planes like this little block plane, this is for finer work and uh, for many little jobs where a larger plane can't get in. But if you want one basic plane, I'd reckon that a number five would be the best bet. Of course you get these planes in various sizes and for various jobs but this one as I said is pretty versatile. As far as the companies are concerned there are several companies in India that make very decent hand planes and the best among them are Soba Industries though their planes uh, like this one tend to be more expensive than the others but then you have to do less tweaking, less tuning and generally it's a better tool. There are of course other companies as well including Anand which makes very fine planes and chisels and other hand tools, uh, many of which they export to Western countries. So why are planes so important? Why does a beginner need to have one? The answer is because when you're doing stuff like sawing or doing other kinds of cutting, you can't always cut absolutely accurately. You know, it's the rare person who can take a saw and make the absolutely accurate cut every time. That rarely happens. To, to fine tune a cut made by a handsaw, you need a hand plane. You need to plane it down and bring it perfectly to the line that you need to cut to. So for that purpose, I think a hand plane is absolutely essential. And then there are drills. The drill is perhaps my most used tool in the workshop. 
and it's so useful and it's got so many uses that I can't even begin to enumerate them. It makes a lot of sense to buy one of these drill kits. Not only you get the main uh, the drill machine with its key, but you get a whole lot of other stuff as well, including an entire set of drill bits, screwdriver bits, a cutter, tape, hammer, plier, wrench, level, sockets. So it's really economical and you'll find a lot of uses for something like this for all kinds of job in, jobs in the home. The other category of basic tools would be what I call fixing tools. Once you've cut your pieces to the required dimensions, you need to put them together. And I think there are three main methods by which you can put pieces together. One is by nails, two is by screws, and the third is through glue. And of course, you can use a combination of these three methods. So for nails, you need a hammer. For screws, you need a screwdriver. And for glue, you need clamps. So these are the three different kinds of basic fixing tools. We're going to make our little shelf with just glue and screws. The pilot holes have already been drilled and all we need to do is to tighten the screws to attach the pieces. Now the frame is ready, you just need to add a shelf, which will be this, it can go somewhere. The shelf needs the back panel, which needs to be measured and cut to size, and then glued and nailed on. Here you can see why you need different sizes of rulers. I use a really long one for a lot of marking uh, of my larger boards and pieces. Once your project is finished, once you've cut the pieces, joined them together, tried them, everything is ready, the last thing that you need to do is to finish it. By finishing we mean either painting the project or staining and polishing it. In this case we're going to uh, paint our project and what you require is a simple little paintbrush. Uh, before you paint or stain your project, you'll have to take one more step, that is, sand it down thoroughly. You need uh, sandpaper of various grits to smooth the surface and to knock off the jagged edges and the corners. And uh, one tool that I find very useful in this regard are these sanding blocks. They're pretty simple. You just take a piece of sandpaper, cut it to size, and then you have these uh, levers or clips which you can clip the paper onto like this and, uh, you know, use it for sanding. Our little shelf is completed, painted and looking pretty nice, all ready to be fitted on the wall. So that was a very basic kind of introduction to woodworking tools for the beginner. And of course I assumed in this video that you're going to be wanting to use hand tools and not power tools, which are of a different class altogether. But with this set of tools, I think you can start making stuff. And the most important thing is to make stuff, not the tools. You'll get the tools, you'll get by, something will happen. You'll find that you have what is required to do something, make something, if you really got that uh, making drive in you. So I think with these set of tools which I've introduced you to in this video, you can start your DIY woodworking. And 
If I've missed out anything, if you need any clarifications, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. I'll try to clarify your doubts. And till then, thank you and wanna come.